Hello, and welcome to Knitting Traditions. My name is Inga, and uh, this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting, mostly through podcast episodes, but um, this is a special episode. Uh, I want to introduce a cow for this year. So for the past two, three years, I've been running different make-alongs. If I say Cal, I'm sorry, Cal, Mal, essentially the effect is the same. Um, it's a make-along. I'm a knitter, so for me it's a, it's a knit-along, but anyone is allowed to participate with their craft. So I wanted to get on here and talk about it and knit with you guys and go through some of my dream knits that I hope to get around to at least some of them this year and that is what the make-along is going to be about as well. So the hashtag, I'm gonna run it through Instagram just because that is what works for me in a hectic day and it's going to be the dream knits cow and that's um an available hashtag. So the Dream Knits Cal is about casting on something that you've been dreaming about making but just haven't gotten around to for some reason. And I have cast on two things already in the spirit of this make along and I'm going to show you one of the items is what I am knitting on. And this is the Checkmate sweater by Knitwits and Yarns. He is based in Australia. He's a knitter and a pattern designer. And he has created this beautiful intarsia sweater. It's unisex, it's knit back and forth. So <laughs> it's a lot of purling, but um, I'm learning intarsia for the first time, which was not at all as hard as I thought it was going to be and it really is a lot of fun. And this pattern I'm knitting up for my brother so it's going to be a gift. I've been wanting to knit it for a while now and I got the yarn in January and I'm currently working on the back piece and the yarn that I am using is the Viking Garn, a Norwegian commercial yarn that's 100% Highland wool and this is the Eco Highland wool base. It's 110 meters to 50 grams. It's a non superwash and I'm using this instead of the recommended Brooklyn Tweed which is more expensive um, and not that easy to come by for me. So these are the, the four colors that I'm using. I talked about it in the in a normal podcast episode as well, so I'm not going to go too far into it. This is going to be mostly about other dream knits that I haven't gotten around to. Um, but yesterday I cast on probably my ultimate dream knit. So this is a pattern that I have been wanting for as long as I can remember, probably even before I started knitting. So my grandmother, she has knit up some traditional Norwegian colorwork sweaters that's been in the family and we have them at the cabin. And in a similar style, there are the Olympic sweaters that are, there are patterns created by Dalgan, which is, um, a Norwegian company who used to produce yarn and knitting patterns. Now they sell um, knitted items um, that they produce in on knitting machines and they sell them. Uh, the pattern is free, at least in Norwegian. I don't know if it's in English, but probably since it's such an international thing with the Winter Olympics, um, you might be able to get it in English as well. But uh, I have a a PDF of 
the all the Olympic sweater patterns with sweaters and hats and socks, etc. It's in Norwegian, uh, but it was free, so I downloaded it and um, I've had it in my pattern library for many years now. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's an all over colorwork sweater. It's from the year that I was born, so I really wanted to make it. And I wanted to make it in the original colors of version number two, which is uh, like um, charcoal, almost black with white. And the contrasting colors are very bright red, yellow, and green. Now, it's not the colors that I would typically pick for a pattern, but I do like the very stark contrast of those colors in the original and I wanted to make this like the original. The yarn is Hilo, uh, which is no longer available. There are substitute suggestions, but I didn't really want to knit with those. So I think it was because of the colors, but I'm not sure. There was something, I just wasn't feeling the yarn. So I bought some Cascade 220 non-superwash and I've been wanting to knit up with it. I've heard lots of great things and it's affordable. It's not something that's sold in Norway. So um, I was very fortunate that Sue from Prayer Bag Works or Susan was coming to Norway and she brought it for me and I paid her for the yarn and I've already cast on. So I'll put this aside. So I cast on last night, I wound up all the cakes and I started my swatch, which is still a bit humid, but this is uh, the sleeve, or at least the beginning of the sleeve. So you knit the cuff on three millimeters and then you do the color work. So I did 3.5 millimeters, it said either 3.5 millimeters or four millimeter needles. Now the specs of the Cascade 220 is exactly the same as the specs of the original Hilo. So I thought it was a good substitution and it's beautiful to, to knit the color work with. It really is plump um, and I just really like how it looks. Um, what else can I say? I saw after knitting this that my gauge was closer to 24 stitches and it's supposed to be 22 stitch gauge. So after this initial report, when you're supposed to move on to the next part of the chart, I changed to four millimeter needles and I'm using circular needles for this all throughout from a smaller circular. And then here I increased to a wider circumference of interchangeables just to make it easier. And I tried it on and it was quite snug. So I'm knitting the medium, which is supposed to give me some positive ease on the bust, but I don't like my sleeves to be too tight and it was tight. And I would also like this to be able to fit my boyfriend. Actually, after seeing this, he said that it was really nice and he wants one too. So if I don't get tired of all of this color work, I might make two so we can have matching sweaters instead of sharing a sweater. We want to be wearing this skiing for Easter. The colors here actually really reminds me of a very traditional Norwegian chocolate called Kiklunsch, which is associated with hiking and skiing. And um, there are even sweater patterns out there inspired by that chocolate. So I think they're on Ravelry. Um, but I decided to block it last night and just um, stretch it on the floor. So I didn't use pins or anything. I just stretched it sideways and left it to dry. It's almost dry now and I'm gonna see. So yeah, it definitely helped a little bit. It's not skin tight right now. I mean, it doesn't have a huge amount of positive ease, but it has a bit more than it did yesterday. So let's see if I got my gauge right this time. Let's count, shall we? So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-two and a half. So it's pretty much on gauge right now. 
Uh, so I will continue with the four millimeter needles, I believe. I also find that my gauge on a small circumfer circumference is usually tighter than on the body. So if anything, the body will be slightly um, wider compared to my circumference on the cuff. So that should work out nicely. I'll just make sure to block the sleeves before before binding off and make sure that it's long enough. So I got into a point yesterday of 30 centimeters, which is when you're supposed to go to the next part in the chart. So this just repeats until you hit 30 centimeters. So I'm gonna measure it again now after blocking it sideways to make sure that it didn't shrink too much this way. And um, if it did, I might have to do a little bit of math just to make sure that the sleeves aren't too short because I've been stretching it sideways to, to get gauge. But I think it's fine. I think it's going to be great. And it's looking really nice. So this is an evening of knitting. It's quite addicting, I must say. So yeah, these are the colors and I mentioned them in the last podcast and I will mention them again in my future podcast. And I'm keeping them in a yarn bowl from Susan, which was a gift. The yarn I got myself, but she generously got me one of her bowls. She doesn't have anything in her Etsy store right now, but I will link it below and you can message her on Instagram if you want to. And these are the kinds of needles that I use for my smaller circumference. So these are not nine inch, nine inch hurts my hands. They are closer to 12, like 11 to 12 inch. Addy has them and Sun is Garn has them and for me they're perfect for cuffs and socks and they are bordering on being too long for like the the getting close to the toe of my foot which I, I like it to be snug but it does work for me so and I don't have wide feet so I think it should work for most people so yeah that's what I'm currently working on as my ultimate ultimate dream knit for my dream knit cow. Now, I, to be upfront, I don't have anything as a prize. Um, who knows, maybe there won't be a prize for this. Maybe it's just for you to feel inspired to cast on the things that you've been wanting to cast on. But maybe there will be prizes at the end of the year. Uh, who knows, we'll see. Either way, join in for the fun of it. Um, just because... Now is your chance to cast on your dream knits. Oh. On that note, I have noted down a few of the things that I, at some point in my life, would like to make. And I figured we could go through it and then I could put photos of the item up on the screen. And maybe it's a bit of inspiration for you to put on your dream knit list as well. Um, okay, so I, d I have a few, probably like 20 <laughs> things listed on here. Some of them are clear in my mind dream knits that I really, really want to make. Um, and some are... I don't remember exactly how they look, but I have put them on my list, so clearly it's something that aesthetically I would like to have in my wardrobe. So the first one is the, is it the Abiolos or Abydos or Aloidos? See, I can't even read my own writing, but it's, uh, I think it's the Abydos sweater by Lily Kate makes and I'll put a photo so you can see here now Lily Kate makes also has a podcast on YouTube she's gorgeous she creates gorgeous designs um, and this is one of those designs of hers that I would really like to make now I don't know how all of her designs would look on my body type um, but she really does create stunning garments and 
this is one of those that I would really like to to make. I even have another pattern on this list by hers, which let's see, I I I did a sloppy job. I just wrote the pattern name and I didn't write anything down about the designer or the yarn used, but I do think that the other pattern of hers that is on my dream knit list is the living stone vest now one of my favorite knits of all time is my amy pullover and i feel like this vest kind of falls into the same category uh, the only thing holding me back about casting on that vest is that she uses um like a metal ring and I don't know where I would get that. Maybe it says in the pattern, I haven't checked, but I've not been able to see anything like that in stores where I live. So it's probably something that I would have to order online if I were to make it. So we'll see, it's on my list, but that's one of the things holding me back. The next item on my list is the Ilha sweater and I have had this pattern in my queue for quite some time. I have bought the pattern, I'm pretty sure, and I bought the yarn for it. So there really isn't anything holding me back from casting on. So it's really just a matter of freeing up the mind space really, because I do have needles, um, I have the yarn, I have the pattern. So it's just about getting in the right mindset of, of casting it on. And potentially I have more than one yarn quantity to use for the Ilha sweater. It really just is a beautiful pullover. It has a little bit of texture, which keeps it interesting. And at least on the sample photos, it looks really flattering. So it's one of the cast ons for 2023, I think. So I do hope that will be one of my dream knit Cal entries of this year. And I can show you the yarn that I'm thinking will be my first attempt of the Ilha. So I bought this yarn with the Ilha pattern in mind and I looked at the pattern and I made sure that I got enough for the size that I want to make. Now this is the Ooh, yarn fell out of my closet. This is the Pickles Pure Wool. It's 100% Ren Nyul, which means clean new wool. It's the shade SD158. And um, it's 380 meters to the 100 grams, and I have three. So I am hoping and thinking that since I bought this yarn, with the pattern in mind, I checked the yardage recommendations and it should be enough. However, I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna be playing yarn chicken and probably I'm not, I should just, you know, trust the yarn recommendations and trust my ability to, to read numbers and get the right amount. Um, it just feels like a, not a lot of yarn for a sweater medium size or more um, with some I think there's some cabling going on at least there's some texture so and I don't have more so if I run out I probably will not be able to get more in the same dye batch or the same lot so that is something in the back of my mind that is holding me back a little bit but I didn't want to get another 100 gram ball of this because it's not the cheapest yarn and I should be able to just trust the pattern, so. <sighs> yes. 
I think it'll be fine. If anything, I do have some holes super soft in a similar color, so I could use that for cuffs and stuff if I do run out, but I think it should be okay. So that is my dream knit dream of the Ilha sweater. All right. Next on my list, I have the Sagland and the Versailles from Albiona or Albina McLaughlin. She is based in Ireland, I believe, and I have yet to knit any of her patterns, but I have heard only good things. Uh, how her patterns are really well written and very clever, very well designed, and that they have several options for different necklines and modifications to really make the sweater your own, which is something I love because I tend to do that to my patterns either way. And here's a sweater that also gives you the instructions uh, for doing those mods. So I'm really excited to try it. I haven't decided which one of the two I want to make first. I've seen um, other podcasters make the Versal. So, um... <sighs> I'm, I'm really having a hard time designing which one to do. So Alex uh, from the Ancestral Craft, she made the Versailles and she had great things to say about it, which is what made me want to make it. But then I also have seen the photos on Albina's Instagram of the Saglen and it really looks nice. And I might just make both. I have enough yarn to make both and I want to make it in unspun yarn from Hillesvog and I'll get you the color that I want to make. All right, so I have plenty of this color in my stash now because I acquired some more just so that I would have enough to do two projects. And this is the charcoal color from Hillesvog. It's their unspun roving. It's plied, or it's not plied, but it's wound up with two strands of unspun. And I love, I love the Hillesvog. It's, um, I have different unspun in my stash and I feel like this is right up there with the new titan. So some new titan bases might be softer and this might be softer than some of their bases. So it really is a beautiful unspun yarn. And I want to make either the Versailles or the Saglen in this color. And then they are very similar patterns, so I'm not going to make them both in the same color. So for the other version, I'll probably do it in the gray from Hillesvog. So they have like a very light gray, then they have this gray, and then they have this very dark charcoal gray. And I think that is what I'm going to do. And I just want to hug them and, you know have them as pillows in my bed and they're sheepy and it's great ah yeah no definitely on my knit list then i have the alaska sweater so a few episodes back i was knitting with the uh the re, uh, natura and I, every time I said it wrong, it was the Juliette or Ulysses. I think it was the Juliette. And I was asking about um, the name of a hat pattern that I had seen, which I would like to maybe use the scraps for. However, uh, I found out that it was the Alaska hat, which has the Alaska sweater. That's what I was thinking about. I just couldn't remember the name. But that one uses, I think, more of a fingering weight. And this is like thicker, like DK worsted plus. Um, but that is a sweater that I have seen before and I've had it in the back of my mind. I would really like to make that sweater one day. And I think I could use some of my coned yarns for that, which are like light fingering, fingering weight. So that is on my dream knit list. And I might just cast that on as well this year. We'll see. We'll see what I get around to. I make no promises, but I have a dream knit list. And some will make it and some won't. And some will just stay on the list. 
I think very few of these items will be cut out from the list so that, you know, they're, I'll never cast them on ever. Most of these I'm pretty sure will be on this list until I get around to them one day. Let's go on. So I talked about the, yes, the Miles shirt jacket, um, which I think is a pattern by Ozetta. Now I've not made any patterns by Ozetta, but they are beautiful. There's lots of beautiful patterns and I do think the Miles shirt jacket could be made with Unspun. I think it might be made with Plotilopi if I'm not mistaken. And I have some Plotilopi in my stash and I also have more of the Himmelsvog and I have a little bit of Nutidin. So that is on my, it just looks really cozy. Um, like, but it, I don't think it would be like a jacket to go out in, but I think it will be like a throw on cardigan in the house and it has pockets. And right now my throw on jacket is my kufta in all over color work. The only thing it's missing is pockets. So I want one with pockets. A huge oversized, warm, comfy jacket with pockets. So that's the Miles shirt jacket. Then on my list, I have the Wildnis sweater, which I think is from Fiber Tales. I should have put the names down, but I didn't. And again, that I think is in fingering weight. I would have to check. I definitely have yarn for it in my stash. So it's just a matter of getting around to it, really. Um, it's a nice textured yoke. I love a nice textured yoke. I think this year I want to knit more garments that are visually pleasing with the texture. Um, in the winter I love knitting my color work and it's heirloom pieces, statement pieces. Uh, but the rest of the year I often gravitate towards textured uh, items. I think they're very beautiful, they're fun to knit. And for the plain garments I want to make sure that I make something in colors that I want more of. So I do think I want to knit more in dark colors this year. Black, I really want a black sweater. So that is on my dream knit plan. I want to make another Amy slipover this year. I made one last year with this yarn. I had to unwind it because I needed only one strand together with the silk mohair. So this year I want to make a light version to have over my summer dresses because I live in Norway and it's cold. Uh, so I think I'm going to use Nutidin for that because Nutidin comes with a single fiber roving. So I'm going to pair that with a silk mohair. So that's my list for this year. And I really, really, really want to get around to that. So I think once I have the mental capacity free I will cast on another Amy slipover. The only thing holding me back is I do remember it was a lot of purling. But I mean it's not like I mind purling, it's just I prefer knitting. But I'm okay with purling. Um so I'll I'll get around to it. I I also think I did do some modifications, so I do have to go back to my videos and listen to myself explain what I did and probably just count how many stitches I have on the ribbing of my Amy slipover to see how many stitches I cast on. Because I do think I made a modifications with my amount of stitches. But I think I used the recommended needle size. So I'll get around to it. Then the next on my list is the Uxa sweater. Uh, now, again... I should have written down the pattern designer. I will put a photo here of it. I believe this is also one of those textured yoke sweaters. So you can see I'm repeating myself here, but texting yoke sweaters is something that I want to make more of this year. Then I saw on Instagram the side split pullover. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, this is the sweater I was looking at that has a V-neck. And that's something I want more of in my wardrobe. I have a lot of classic like raglan and uh, higher necks. 
I don't have a lot of v-neck sweaters uh, so I want to make that this year and I think I want to make that in black I think that's going to be a very nice basic sweater that I can wear out and dress up and I think it's gonna look really nice just need to motivate myself for knitting in black but it's on my dream knit list the next sweater has been on my list for ages since it was in testing and that's the Favo sweater from Lerke of Fiber Tales. That sweater. I saw the back of it as she was knitting the sample and I was like, hmm, I need that in my life. I definitely need that in my life. Um, I haven't gotten around to it though. I don't know what yarn to use for it. I don't think I'll be able to get the yarn that she used here. So I would have to find another yarn that would work but I really like how her sample looks so I do need to do some research and I definitely have a lot of yarn in my stash that I can use but I would have to find the right one so it's just a little bit of mental work that needs to be done but it is something that I would really like to have in my wardrobe. I would be making a modification to it though because I have seen in um in the projects of other people and comments that it's quite cropped and I am a lot taller than Lerke and I often have to do length modifications to patterns. Um, it looks like a really cozy, oversized, thick textured sweater and I would want it to be long so that it's also warm and functional. So I would be making it longer. And I think it's knit bottom up so yeah there's just a little bit of more of mental work going into that that's why it's still on my dream knit list and not knit years ago but I do really want to make it it's beautiful then the next one is the seasons sweater and I think this is also by Ozera this is beautiful it's something that a lot of stores are selling as uh, machine knit sweaters it's stunning it's basic it's something you know that you could have in your wardrobe for years to come only thing holding me back is that I think it's going to take a long time to knit it so I want to make sure that I have the a yarn that I will love knitting with and a color that I would really like to wear before starting that but it's on my dream knit list the next is Arles Kusgenster. I bought the kit for this two years ago, maybe, and I just haven't gotten around to it. But I, re I really, really want to have this uh, knit up. And is it from Rauma? Yeah, it's a pattern from Rauma. So I bought a kit for it with, with the pattern. So here you can see it's a beautiful boxy cropped sweater with very wide sleeves I got the color that's in this sample I can see on the photo here when she's not pulling into her pants it's quite boxy and I love it so the reason I haven't gotten around to knitting this is because the yarn it's not a winter yarn it's like an in-between seasons. It's uh, the alpaca linen and I've been kind of thinking that I'm not going to knit on it in the winter. I'm going to knit on it in the spring, but every time I get around to spring, there's just a lot of other things that I want to be knitting on and all the bright colors. I always want to knit with bright colors in the spring and this is not a bright color, but I really want to have the finished project. So I think I should really just get going. It's not something that I want to knit on and I'm very much a, um, a words, not the pro process, process. I'm very much a process knitter. And for this one, it's more that I want the finished project, um, but I'll get around to it. I will. It's waiting for me. It's ready. I just need to cast on. And I, 
think it's going to go by quite quickly. So there's no reason not to. And the next is actually on the list is the Olympic sweater from 1994, which I have already cast on. So yay! Good on me. I'm really, really happy. That's been on the list the longest and finally getting around to it. Next pattern on this sweater, I am a little bit unsure about. So I have seen it on Instagram and I think it's beautiful color work and I'm loving all the browns. Did I even say what pattern I'm talking about? I'm talking about the twigs sweater. Sorry guys, the twigs sweater. And the color work is beautiful. I love the really brown muted colors and I definitely have the cones in my stash to knit that sweater up. I'm pretty sure I would have to swatch, but I'm not lacking in browns and beiges in my cone stash and greens. I could put greens in there. The only thing holding me back is that there's something about the shape of the garment that is like off for me. There is some, I don't know if it's the sleeves or the cuff, but it's just something that's not working for me uh, or the yoke. There's just, the shape is not what I would want. So I would definitely be modifying the pattern to have like a straight body shape and a straight sleeve shape. And um, I, I now I don't remember how, how far down it splits for sleeves, but I like, it's a split not all the way up in my armhole but just not too far down i don't want the the bat wing effect so yeah there is something about the shape when i look at the instagram photos that's like hmm, i would have to do something uh but those modifications would not be difficult to do so that is on my dream knits list as well next i really want to knit um tulip sweater for babies and kids. I have unspun in my stash and I want to use the leftovers to make small versions that I can use for gifts in the future. So I just haven't gotten around to it. I don't know what it is. I don't like knitting tiny garment items just because there's you have to do something all the time and I really enjoy my stockinette island. So I haven't gotten around to it, but it is on my dream knit list and it's so cute. Melody Hoffman is the designer and she's been making it for her daughter every year and it's just so cute. So that is that is on my dream knits list for sure. And another gift knit that's on my dream list is the baby boho blanket. But I also kind of want to make a big version to have on my couch. So yeah. I don't think I have the yarn for it though. That definitely would work really well in a soft, chunkier yarn. And I'm definitely more of a hoarder of the thin, itchy, rustic yarns, so. But it's on my list for the future. Uh, but I will probably have to get yarn to make that blanket, to have it the way that I want it to be. What I do have yarn for though is another baby blanket which is called the NSGF1. I'll put a photo up here and I have two yarns in my stash that I want to make that with. Uh, this is the yarn that is used in the original and I got this on my trip to Denmark that I got for Christmas from my boyfriend. So this is yarn from Gult. This is the number four yarn, which is a mix of Falkland Merino and a Gotland blend. And this is the undyed. And the pattern calls for three skeins and you hold the yarn double. Before I got this, I bought this yarn. And this is a color that I really want to make the blanket in. Now I could just knit it with the natural and have it as a light gray or I could over dye it but this is the color that I really wanted but they didn't have it in the the gold base and I bought this in December I think it was November or December also in Denmark they only had two skeins of it in the store this is the duo 
uh, two thread merino lamb's wool. It's 100 grams and it's 540 meters. So I was a bit unsure about knitting this blanket up when I only had two skeins. I was worried I was going to run out. And um, I was thinking I could maybe hold it single stranded. But this is like an all over lace blanket, so I didn't want to start not knowing how the outcome was going to be or if I was going to run out. So instead, I wanted to first knit it with this and see how much it actually uses. Um, this is 650 meters, so it's thinner but it's not half the thickness of this so if i were to knit this with a single strand i would have enough to finish the blanket but it would be a lot thinner so i'm gonna knit it first with the original yarn and see how i like it and then see if i think it would work with a thinner yarn or if um i could just omit the outer part of the blanket and see how i would like that or I'll just find a different purpose for this yarn, but it's beautiful and I think it would be a really nice, warm, thin baby blanket. So that's on my dream knit list. Now we're getting close to the end. Um, two more. So I have things sorted on my Instagram into stuff for me and then I have another section for like gift knits and baby knits so that's why that is all coming at the end here. Selma's Sovedrakt by Petite Knit is high up on my list. I really want to make it uh, but essentially that would be like knitting an adult sized sweater. There's a lot of knitting going into that and there's also seaming going into that so that's a reason why I haven't cast it on, but I think it would be a beautiful gift and I really want to make it one day. I also want to make crochet baskets um, to have around my house, sort of like the same purpose as the ones from, from Susan that she's gifted me. I just really like these yarn bowls and they are a nice aesthetic design and I would like to be able to crochet some square ones in a nice similar um, color to those and maybe have some in in the bathroom to put stuff in and yeah I just think it would be really nice. The last pattern that I put on here is the Dartmoor sweater v-neck and I believe this is a very new design. I think I saw it on Instagram as a sample. And who was it that was wearing the sample? I don't remember now. Somebody was wearing their sample as a part of the test knit. Uh, and I just really, really, really liked it. And it's now on my dream knit list. I probably have other things in the back of my mind somewhere stored away that is on my dream knit list definitely want to make more all over color work koftas from Rauma and I have I have the yarn ready I have the pattern ready I want to make the set the style for sure in and I think I want to make it with the light color and a bright orange I think it's going to be really nice for spring and summer so that is also on my dream knit list and ready to cast on. I just think I should probably finish the Olympo Olympic all over color work sweater first. And also on my needles, I have the Dreams of Gold by Isabella Clark. That was on my previous dream knit list. It's just got the sleeves left. And the um, Talvinen by Caitlin Hunter, that was on my list, and that one's on my needles in the living room. I'm working on the body, and I have the sleeves left on that one. So I do have several more complicated knits on my list right now, so I'll probably wait with the kofta that needs steaking, and it's all over color work, until I have finished a few more of my color work projects. 
so that was my dream knits uh, if you have something that instantly pops to mind as a dream knit for you please write it below who doesn't want a bit more of inspiration to add to an ever-growing list of knits we want to make and if you want to join in just post a photo on instagram with the hashtag dream knits cal i would love to see what you guys are all making and join in on the inspiration train and you know inspire each other to knit whatever we've been dreaming about knitting what and whatever would make us happy and with that note i will see you soon i hope you're well happy making bye